Our text is the Gospel lesson today from the 17th chapter of John in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Normally, eavesdropping on someone is a no gospel. From our youngest years, <coughs> our mothers taught us that it is impolite, in fact rude, to be able to listen to a conversation that was never intended for our ears. But we also know just how tempting it is to listen to such a conversation. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus, just a few hours before he would be lifted up on the cross, goes to his Father in prayer. It's what we've come to call Jesus' high priestly prayer. And we ignore our mother's teaching and eavesdrop on Jesus. In fact, Jesus encourages us to eavesdrop. Previously in this prayer, Jesus prayed for himself. First, Jesus is praying for the strength to go forward with what was before him. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I have with you before the world existed. And then Jesus prays for his little band of disciples. Peter and Andrew and the rest. He prays that they would remain united in the faith that he had taught them and that they would carry these teachings forward to those who have not yet heard the faith. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. They, yours they were and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. I'm praying for them. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may sanctify the truth. And as we continue to listen, we see that this conversation includes us. Our text begins with that third part of Jesus' prayer. Incredibly, deep within his passion, with the cross approaching with the morning's dawn, Jesus takes time to pray also for those people who would come to faith in the future, those who would be the recipients of the gospel that was yet to be preached to them. His prayer is that his truth, which he already talked to the disciples, would also be taught to the world. The world, that includes us. Jesus has an eye on us even 2,000 years before we ever heard a word. Because there are faithful people through the years who have used the word, the sacraments, the means of grace, in order for that faith to reach our ears. That means of grace may have been a Bible story told by your mother or read to you by your mother. We are included in Jesus' prayer because we too are baptized into his name, his family. Now, Jesus encourages us to eavesdrop we're interested in Jesus' words. He is praying to the Father about us. What was it that brought us into this divine conversation? We're included in Jesus' prayer because of his incredible, unfathomable, eternal love for each and every one of us. This love is rooted in the perfect love within the Godhead. 
Love is the way Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have always interacted. And this love, before the foundation of the world, is extended by God's grace to Jesus' earthly disciples, regardless of era. This love includes you and me as Christian disciples. As wonderful as that sounds, that can make us uncomfortable. Because if we are disciples, we have to act. We have to use our effort and our dollars and our willingness to let the Word of God change people. What will it be like to have people who are not German fill our pews? Jesus is praying that they come to believe in Him and become one with us as Jesus and the Father are one. This love is something we cannot know to the fullest extent. Because all of us are self-centered. It's always me first. And when we pray, we usually pray for our needs and our wants and our wishes. How often do our prayers include all of those in the world for whom Jesus prays? Although we cannot comprehend the breadth and depth of Jesus' love, we do believe it. And we love hearing Jesus talk about it. It is that love that gave Jesus the desire, the will to accomplish the salvation of all humanity. Nothing could or would stop him from accomplishing it. The power of the devil couldn't stop it. The magnitude of our sins was not too great. The God-man Jesus, who we overhear praying to the Father, would pay the price of the sins of all in the next agonizing hours. He would die and then rise again three days later, and the result would be the redemption of all of those for whom he prayed. Jesus' work includes us and all people for all time and beyond. It's rooted in eternity. It endures into eternity. It endures for all eternity. Did you hear it? Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory. If you heard it, you did a lot better than me for years. It wasn't until a fellow brother pastor preached a funeral sermon that I finally heard it. Jesus is praying for you and for me to leave this life and be with him for the rest of your eternal life. And no matter what you pray for your loved ones or for yourself about being all better and being in this life forever, at one day, God the Father says no to your prayer and says yes to Jesus' prayer. And we will see his glory. Jesus encourages us to eavesdrop on this. Jesus is praying the righteous Father will judge all people at the proper time. And those who reject Christ right now, who reject his work, who think it's irrelevant or not needed, are dead in their sins. And we need to hear that. Because Jesus is praying for them right now. Jesus is praying that his name will go to every one of them. He desires that no one be lost, but that all would come to them. You and I, who 
who have come to repentance and faith and received the forgiveness of sins, we are the ones who now are gathered to work with Christ Jesus in the church so that others who aren't there will be gathered into his name. This is more than agreeing that our church should be involved in outreach. This is each one of us taking time to talk to our friend. Our friend who does not attend church, who does not know Jesus, and offer to bring that friend to Bible study and divine service. In that forgiveness of sins, is eternal life to dwell with God in heaven and to see his face. We have a foretaste of that glory every time we gather together and receive his gifts through word and suffering. The will of God, motivated by his eternal love, brings this gift to us and he wants to bring that gift to so many others. So as we begin eavesdropping on Jesus in prayer to his Father, we see that each one of us is included among those he prays for. In fact, there was never any real need to eavesdrop because Jesus wants us to hear his prayer so that we have all the more confidence that our place is by his side in ministry today and in heaven forever. All of that is secured. Here on earth, we will share his love as we labor, even as we suffer in his name. And then in heaven, we will share his eternal love and glory and will reign with him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.